welcome back. Another episode of Paper Stack Podcast. Paper Stack Podcast. Feels like it's been a while. Things are going so fast right now. It's uh, the <sighs> holidays. Holidays and then lots of stuff going on the, the site. Oh my gosh, the site's just exploding. Mm-hmm. We have tons of new upgrades coming, mm-hmm. whether from vendors to just stuff on the platform. I'm beta testing right now some of this stuff that's going to uh, yeah, that's be replace... Fun. A big part of the site. Yeah, a big part of the site. And let yeah. me tell you, it is it's yeah. awesome. It's, it's, it's a, it is a drastic change. It's huge change. Um, I love it for the just the regular website. But for mobile, mm-hmm. it's like it is hands down the best mobile upgrade we've done mm-hmm. to date ever mm-hmm. with Paperstack. It is... It will change the way that you can do transactions on the platform, or at least look into them. Yep, it's, and, and it's the ultimate efficiency upgrade. Yeah, it is efficiency. We're all about efficiency here. So, so a lot a, going on. Yeah. Busy. Yeah. Besides that, you know, we're just winding down the end of the year. You know, we're uh, going to couple you know more of these podcasts out, then they take off and. Yeah. Just yeah, Brett and I got to go spend a little time in Sarasota with. Oh yeah, with Martin. Martin Sains and. Uh, yeah. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sean Manuo, we yeah. got to go down to the mastermind and hang out for a bit, meet some great people, and yeah. talk shop. A cool office. And gave a little. They got to see the prelim. Oh, okay. numbers yeah. on the uh, end of the year report. So yep, we've got the big end of the year report, which we're going to be comparing. Obviously, looking at all of 2020 numbers, mm-hmm. soup to nuts, the, the pandemic report, we'll call it. Right. And comparing it to last year, what happened? Let's look, yeah. compare, contrast. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll have a video series. Yep. Or a video. Yeah, just a video. But a we'll video. be asking questions of people and their opinions and yeah. your opinion and a nice write-up, PDFs, all kinds of stuff. So it'll be fun. It should be good. So you guys should love it. Um, I, I'm really excited for it. I've already seen the mock-ups. We just looked at them actually today, and mm-hmm. they look great. Um, mm-hmm. You know, big news. We've got a new designer in-house. So yeah, that's great. It's good. We're, yeah, we're excited. Things are growing leaps and bounds here at Paper Stack. Yeah, yeah. It's very so, fun. So. so what's today, Brett? Tell me what's, today we, what's on the agenda. Well, we, we had some, you know, a lot of the transactions happened. There's been some really cool case studies. I think we're going to do a couple. The one next couple of these will be case, case studies. studies. Yeah. And so, you know, just how one of the things that came across, um, you know, names, of course, remain anonymous. Sure. Uh, um, but, you know, like uh, it was a transaction that happened on the paper stack platform and how it it turned around to be, uh, you know, what looked like might not be a great deal. You could see the diamond in the rough and kind of say, hmm. And it, just the idea of how Rick's mind works, I was like, that's... That's pretty smart, man. You, sh- you should uh, you should talk about that. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, I guess to like to kind of put everything in or look at it, just you know, back up a little bit is when you're looking at assets, you always have to look at things from different angles. You know, mm-hmm. it's never what it appears, and that's one of the great things about investing in notes is you can get in there. Um, look at an asset and you can see multiple different exit strategies and I always look at what I'm you know making a buy it's like okay here's like sort of what I think is going to happen with this where I think it's going to go read the you know I call it reading the tea leaves but reading the story Mm -hmm. and then it could go this way this way or this way and make sure that you know you've got a range of different exits and usually those exits all have different dollar amounts tied to them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's always key. You know, with the worst case being, I lose all my money. Mm-hmm. Let's face it, it's investing. Yeah. You could lose all your money. That's, mm-hmm. there's nothing guaranteed about this business. Mm-hmm. But, so this particular, um, this particular asset, um, you know, I'm handling some of the collateral audits right now, helping out one of our, our vendors. And it came in, and I looked at the, you know, it was a, it was a small deal. It was, um, the balance on it was $22,000. Mm-hmm. Um, it was listed as a non-performing loan. Somebody ended up um, getting it under contract for 4000 mm-hmm. which was like, okay, you know, probably it's, if it's a non-performing loan, such a small balance, house probably isn't worth any, it, well, there's a range on there of, mm-hmm. of, 26. 20 to 26,000. Mm-hmm. So it's somewhere in there. It's a smaller balance house, you know, 
um, lower in income area, stuff like that. The collateral package comes to the office. We audit it. And, you know, one of the things we do in our collateral audits is we're, we're really is we're looking for is this an original document or is this a copy? Mm -hmm. And as it turned out, the entire collateral package that I received was a copy. Mm -hmm. Not color copies, black and white copies. So I audited the file and I put, you know, I made notes in there and said, look, not a single document in here was an original. They're all copies. Um, the buyer who was on this was um, a newer gentleman in the space, it seemed like. Um, seemed pretty sharp, pretty smart guy. Mm -hmm. But rightly so, like, it sends up red flags, as it would for me. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, okay, there's some red flags here. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to talk to the, you know, stuff's going on on the platform. You know, I want my money back. I don't want to close on this. Um, I'm trying to, you know, sort of mitigate the deal, talk to people. Hey, what's going on? Are you able to close? What's your issues? Okay, let me see if I can talk to the, the seller. I talked to the seller. So I was like, look, you know, in my head, this is a done deal, mm -hmm. you know. But the seller's like, look, I'll work with the guy. I don't want to make him mad. But I, I knew, he's like, you know, it kind of stinks for me because I'm trying to close this deal out. Mm -hmm. He's like, or close out this company. End of the year stuff, tax stuff. I get it. You're trying to wrap a company up. The last thing you want to do is have assets in the company that crosses over into 20. 21. Yeah. It's just another year of hassle and stuff like that. Another year of taxes you got to file. Um, so he's trying to wrap things up. So I call up the, you know, the um, the buyer on the deal and I'm looking at him like, hey, what's going on with this? Mm -hmm. You know, wh why don't you want to close? You know, you're getting a pretty good deal. It's four grand. Um, if you don't want to close, I get it. And he's like, well, you know, I just need to make sure I have the collateral file. I'm like, that's fair. And he's like, you know, it's not even, the, it's not even a non-performing loan. I go, really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. That was non-performing. This list is non-performing. He's like, no, it's re-performing. It's starting to re-perform. So I was like, okay, let's look at this. I'll work through this with you and starting to look at it. And I'm like, wow, this is, they started making payments last November. Yeah. And, you know, the payment on it, the P&I payment was 200 bucks. And they're making like 300 bucks, 500 bucks, a couple hundred, but they're trying to get caught up. Mm -hmm. And... Their most recent payment was for five hundred dollars, and now it's uh, was which was in October, and they're due for July, July one. So I'm like, okay, starting to reperform. I'm like, oh, this deal's looking better and better. And I'm telling, I'm like, yeah, well, it's reperforming. This guy, you know, um, he doesn't necessarily not have the original collateral file. It's just tucked away in a storage unit mm -hmm. or in a pod which he's having a house built, long story, but he goes, look, I know where it is. If I've got it, it's in this filing cabinet in the back corner of this pod. I pack the pod. He's like, but I'm not gonna get it till March. So I can send it to him in March. The buyer wasn't real happy with that. Mm -hmm. So um, looking at it and I go, well, I told the, the buyer, I was like, look, I'll, I'll buy it. Yeah. If you don't wanna buy it, you know, if you want your money back, I'll, I'll just step in and take your place. And we started working through it. I went back and talked to the seller again. So I said, look, I'll probably just, I'll buy this. It's, it's a decent deal. Um, it looks like it. A lot of risk still I could see involved. And um, the guy's like, look, if you could buy it, great. He goes, I think I have the collateral. Mm -hmm. I'm 95% sure I have the collateral. I was like, all right, well, let me tell the buyer. Because my goal is not to come in and buy deals. Yeah, yeah. My goal, my goal is to, you know, if I, my goal is not to actually get involved in anything on paper stack as far as the deals go, but we step in when we have to. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it will help out. It, it, you know, I don't say help out. I'll give my personal advice, mm -hmm. which is worth just that. It's just advice. So, um, and I told the buyer, I was like, look, he thinks he's got the, the the collateral. I can't. If you if you guys want to do the deal, do the deal. If you don't, I was like, I'll probably step in and buy it. But I'm like, I want to tell you what I'm seeing as the potential exit. Yeah. <clears throat> on a way to do this. As I said, look, one of the things we do whenever we buy an owner finance loan or maybe a scratch and dent loan like this, it's starting to perform. Is we get an estoppel signed, mm -hmm. right? So the estoppel, the borrower, is saying that hey. You, you go to them and you present them the estoppel. And on the estoppel, it says, you know, here are the terms of your loan. Correct. The principal and interest payment, the current balance, the next due date, the maturity date, interest rate, the whole deal, address, everything. Mm -hmm. It's 
say, I need you, we just bought this, I need you to sign it, have it notarized, send it back. Um, and you can do it one of two ways. If you get an instance like this where somebody's making payments, mm -hmm. they obviously want to stay. Oh yeah. So my thought process was like, I would offer them, hey, would you like me just to modify your loan? Take whatever you owe, because it's the holidays, right? right? You can do something nice for somebody. Mm -hmm. And they're gonna be really jazzed about it. So you say, here, look, I'll go ahead and I will modify your loan for you. I'll put the whatever you owe me, it's a you know, they're five months still, so they owe around a thousand bucks. I'll put that on the back end. Now the principal balance has gone from twenty two thousand to twenty three thousand. Mm -hmm. Their interest uh, their interest rate would stay the same, their payment amount would stay the same, but instead of two hundred and forty five payments, they'd have two hundred and fifty one payments. So it's six extra payments. Nothing else changes. They don't have to make double payments. You're helping them out. At the same time, you're modifying the loan. You're going to have them verify that with an estoppel. Yeah. So I was like, you could do that. Now, they may push back and say, ah, I don't really like the idea of putting stuff on the back end. I'd rather pay it and catch up. I'm on a good thing. At that point, you, you're like, well, I still got to get them to sign the estoppel because it's verifying that like you own the note and everything like that. And since you don't have the original collateral file, you kind of want them to say, yeah, you're the rightful owner. Mm -hmm. So there I was like, well, you know, you can just go to the borrowers if they don't, if they don't want to do the loan mod and just say, look, okay, that's fine. I get it here. Just so we're both on the same page. Let's verify that this is what we're agreeing what you're behind. Mm -hmm. I'm the owner, yada, yada, yada. So you're still getting them to verify it. They sign the estoppel. Now you've got that. I have them notarized, say sign it, have it notarized, send it back. Do you have to have it notarized? You don't have to, but it's, one extra it's just one extra thing on there. It's like, look, you not only did you sign it, you had it notarized, mm -hmm. which means you had to show to them that it was actually you signing it. So I look at that as just an extra layer of... Nice. So he was like, okay, that makes sense. I go, next step is you have the seller sign a lost note affidavit. Generate one, fill it out. Mm -hmm. Because in the event that you don't have the collateral, you gotta have to have that, and that's the proof. Now, that according to the buyer, the title was all good. He had somebody order title. He went to the bag group mm -hmm. and had them, you know, he ordered all the due diligence documents. Title checked out. The only thing we're running into is, ah, the original collateral file has disappeared. Right. Is that uncommon? Hmm. No. No, it happens. That happens. So you just have to look at it and say, it's, you know, it's it's common for that to happen. You, you can come across that. It's not the it's not the norm. No. But it's it's something that I'm not shocked if I go, oh, the collateral's missing. It's kind of a big deal though, right? Of course it's a big deal. But things happen. I've had collateral disappear. When yeah. I shipped it with uh, you know, one of our shipping partners, <laughs> um, they lost a collateral file. They just lost it. It was in a box, the box exploded, they didn't put all the papers back in there. So it's just lost in purgatory now. So what do you do? I don't, what do you do? Well, if it's a non-performing loan, you can offer to modify them, mm -hmm. recreate the collateral. I mean, there's a lot of different options you have there. If you, it's performing, you just kind of write well, it out. If it, and well, it as well, yeah, performing, you can do that. You can. You have to do a lost note affidavit, and hopefully, you've got all the the, the collateral file imaged. Yeah. Imaging is is key. So. You know, Most of the time you have that at least though, right? We do, especially if you buy it on paper stack. If you buy it on yeah. paper stack, you should have you know most of the stuff all imaged. Mm -hmm. At least all the stuff that you need, like the allonges, yeah. the note, mortgage, all that stuff. You know, you might not have the origination package, but so. Anyways, so we have him, I tell him like, have the seller sign the lost note affidavit. He's like, okay, great. And then I'm looking at it going, so what's your goal with this? Like, are you gonna, buy this and just, he's like, I'll buy it for the cash flow. And I'm like, looking at it, I'm like, okay, that's good. Okay, good cash flow. I was like, you know, I think it was a higher interest rate too. I think it was like eight, seven, five on the interest rate. So it wasn't like a 4% or it was a good interest rate. I was like, man, I go, this is what I would do. Yeah. It's like, I would buy this loan. Mm -hmm. I would get the estoppel sign. I'd have my lost note affidavit. I'd close on it. I'd try to then either offer the loan mod Right, so I'm gonna modify their loan and I'm gonna let it season for the three months until this guy can go, the seller, can go to get their, their stuff out of storage and look. If I get the original collateral file back, I've got 
essentially 12 to 15 months of payment history, them showing like, look, these guys were making payments. Right. And more than just making payments. More than making payments, they're making doubled payments or two and a half times the payments. Mm -hmm. I went ahead and modified their loan, put it all in the back end. So if I modify the loan and I can put that thousand dollars on the back end, well, now my I paid twenty two I paid four thousand for twenty two thousand in principal balance. Now the principal balance is twenty three thousand. So automatically you've 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 got some more value there, mm -hmm. right? You just um, then I say if I get the collateral file, they've maybe made three payments. They've paid it down just a little bit. I can turn around and resell that as a reperforming loan. On our platform for somewhere like sixteen thousand dollars. Wow! In three months. That's crazy. So from four thousand, and you're still getting paid down. So you're like it. Oh, you pay made. You probably paid. You got paid six hundred bucks, and you probably paid twenty dollars or thirty dollars a month in servicing. Servicing. So maybe you're down to you know five ten. Plus you had some costs on generating the documents and the boarding fees and all this. So it, reality is the 600 bucks is probably a wash. It probably washed out all the other costs. So you're, you're probably netting into it for still four grand. Um, but then you're like, you could turn around I could, you know, and sell it for, if you have the original collateral, right. for 16,000, maybe 18,000. I mean, it's a, it's a fairly good, loan it's paying it's shown it's going to pay right it's discounted to the value it's discounted to the principal balance so i said that's what i would do and well, then go ahead when when is it like so if they've been paying for since last november and that, that we're talking november 19 yeah I mean, that's the, isn't that performing i mean i mean mm -mm. when you call it performing? when they're caught up on their payments they were oh. they weren't caught up on their payments they've been paying so you know and this is just me I'm looking at, like I said, like, f and, and my criteria is definitely is different than other people's criteria. Right. In that, like, some people would say, well, I'm not, I don't consider three months of current pay history enough. Like, for me, I'd look at it and say, look, I looked at the pay history and go, wow, they've actually been making payments. Right. They're just still behind. Right. And they've been making payments, they're still behind, but they're showing me that they want to keep the house. So I'm looking at all this stuff going, okay, they want to stay. Yeah. They want to stay. So let's help them out. Let's modify the loan. Helps them out. Helps you out. Hopefully we got our fingers crossed that we get the collateral file in two or three months. If not, I've got a lost note affidavit and a modification. Right. And I've got somebody who's staying and paying. Yeah. That's the best I can do. Now, if I don't get the mod, the, the mod and then I don't get the collateral file, mm -hmm. So now I've got a lost note affidavit, somebody who's signed an estoppel, hopefully, and they're still paying. Hopefully they're caught up in three months. If not, I'm riding it out until they are caught up, and then I'm relisting it, and I'm probably selling it for 12 grand. Wow. Or 13, maybe 12, 13 grand. Because then you're like, well, they're still, they're still paying, right? Yeah. So there was just a lot of different avenues on there. And I go, worst case, maybe I can, if, if none of that works out, I've got this loan for four grand. I can maybe throw them a couple bucks. I can have them sign the house over. I don't think that's what's going to happen, though. I didn't think that was a likely scenario. That's why yeah. I was like, look, I'll buy the deal if you don't want it. Yeah. And I go, I'm telling you all this stuff. I told this to the, to the buyer. I was like, look, I'm going to tell you all this stuff because I don't want you to think that I came in and, and bought a deal out from underneath you. Like, yeah. if you want to keep it, keep it. Here's what I see is the way that I'm going to handle it. Yeah. And and he ended up being really comfortable with the deal. Yeah. Very comfortable with the deal. And he ended up purchasing the deal. And he moved, moved forward with it. And then he, he calls me. Um, oh, another thing is he was, like, going to move the servicing. Oh, yeah, yeah. And no, so no, no. servicing, um, I won't say who he's going to move it to or who it was with, mm -hmm. but... I told him, I was like, look, if somebody, and this is just personal advice, if somebody is staying and paying, why are you going to upset the apple cart? Like, let them stay and pay. Like, the minute you move servicers, you're throwing a, another variable into the equation. Mm -hmm. Leave it there. And so what he did is he wound up calling the servicer, saying, look, I'm going to buy this loan. Can I service it with you? Of course, they were like, yes. And guess what? 
the original collateral file the whole time was sitting with the servicer. Isn't that crazy? It's nuts. It was sitting with the servicer the whole time, and so it was one of those things where it worked out at the end. But you know, that's one of those really interesting case studies where you look at something, and I can I can promise you that I don't know how long that loan sat on our platform. Maybe it was just a week or two. Yeah, I don't know. But there was a lot of people who looked over that loan. I'm guessing. Yeah. I don't know. I, I didn't even know the loan was there on the platform. You know, I'm rarely looking at our inventory to buy. Um, but somebody somebody looked at it. First time guy out of the deal. Now imagine that. You take four grand, you put it down, and he was gonna walk. He was yeah. like done. If that guy, if if the guy said, "Give me, yeah, I'll give you your money back," he's like, he's out. Yeah, he's done. But he stays in there, gets a little help. I should, I would say, everybody get some education. If you would have talked to, I'm, you know, any number of mentors, they probably would have told you the same route that I did. Mm -hmm. um, run this route. This is this is a potential. Right. How to get in and out of it. This is a potential. Four grand. He's gonna triple his money probably. Double at least double it. Yeah. Triple it. Maybe quadruple it. Well, being that he has the originals now, he can. And now he's got the originals, and it's like, dude, you can yeah. do that soon. He, Oh yeah, like if I'm him, I'm modifying the loan today, mm. or I'm, I'm reaching out to my servicer and saying, "Here, offer them a loan mod right now." Mm -hmm. Say, "Here's this loan mod. Do it. Sign it. Here's an estoppel. Sign it. Let's go." Because those estoppels help when you're reselling it. Say, "Look, man, they already verified this. Yeah, they verified that all this is true as of this." Once I so if you have an instance where you're buying something from an owner finance person and they're ticking off. The pay history on the amortization schedule. Yeah, and you then you get an estoppel. Mm -hmm. You say, look, from this estoppel, they're saying from this date everything back is true, and then it's boarded with a servicer. Mm -hmm. And that's your servicer. The servicer says, there's the estoppel. Mm -hmm. Everything then they can, and then you can have it professionally serviced. Right. And then it's just that now you've got accurate servicing stuff going on, but you've got that estoppel in there saying, hey. And that's a benefit for them too. Of course, it's a benefit for the borrowers, because mm -hmm. then it's like, yeah, you can't say I owe you more. Or yeah, you less. can't come back and say, oh, there was an accounting error. It's like, sorry, man. Yeah, this is what I owe you. This is what we owe. We've agreed. You signed it. I signed it. Done. So, that's uh, that's a good one. Yeah, that was a good one. It worked out well. Um, those diamonds in the rough, man. They're just they're there. I mean, you just got to be able to look at them, like uh, you know, TJ is acting. He's the one that's actively buying now on the platform, right? He's doing a lot of buying right now on the platform. You know, I'm so doing a lot of the selling for our fund liquidations, but he's buying a lot of stuff. Yeah, so I know he's in a couple of deals right now, and I don't know what what he sees, but he sees something. You know, he yeah, sees. there's deals out there. You just got to look for uh, different, you know, and everyone's criteria is a little different, you know? Right. I talked to somebody the other day. They've got an income fund. They're paying, you know, they're only paying 8% to their investors, which is great. Mm -hmm. Right, income fund eight percent. Well, if you're making twelve percent, you're making four points. Yeah. So, you know, you put ten, twenty million dollars in that thing. It's it's generate. It's kicking off some income. Yeah. It's paying down the deal. You know. So it's one of those things where you're like, all right, that's uh, I get it. You know. No, so, no, I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, good stuff. That was a good case study. Um, yeah. If you guys have any questions on the case study, you know, always ask. Leave them in the comments. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing more of these case studies. Um, still doing interviews if we can ever get this thing working. We will start interviews first of the year. You, uh, Our first run at it was <laughs> awful. <laughs> it was the – Jamie yeah. Bateman was a good sport with it. I know. The, but the wheels just like, oh, my gosh. We, we pulled up to the starting line, and we slammed <laughs> on the gas, and the engine just blew up, and it didn't work. So yeah, that gonna, sucked. We'll, we'll, hey. <laughs> 21, 2021 is a new year. That's right. But, I mean, we've tested it since. I think we got the, the kinks worked out. It was, I'm pretty sure it was just a battery because I, I didn't have the battery charger <laughs> for the computer. You kind of need that. You know, you kind of need the battery charger. <laughs> Never ceases to amaze me, Bratton. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. anyways, that's it. We'll talk to you soon. Happy holidays. Yep. See you soon. Yep.